<clears throat> okay, hi everyone, how you doing? Um, it's Chris here from Runaway. I'm gonna go through uh, the Green Sand Country 50K route. Um, some very small changes to go through in case you have run it previously. Um, so yeah, as always, just like to go through it um, here on Google Earth and just sort of highlight a few bits and pieces. You can sort of see I've indicated a few hazard points where the checkpoints are and things like that. So for those of you that like to be nice and prepared uh, before the race, then this video is very much for you. Um, so yeah, welcome along. Um, yeah, there's the route in its sort of zoomed out um, view. I always think it looks a bit like a horse. Um, so you're running around this horse in an anti-clockwise direction, starting here in Shuttleworth. What's always funny is if you zoom in here, this is actually somehow the, the Google Maps satellite cameras were turned on on the original Green Sand Country race um, two years ago, three years ago. Uh, so this is actually the race. Uh, quite a small setup, but yeah, always makes me laugh that. So that's our event field just there. You'll be parking in this portion of the field, uh, toilets, everything you need is going to be there. Um, the changes that we're making uh, this year are mainly so that we can have the race on a Saturday. Um, it means that we can uh, give you a rest day on the Sunday rather than going back to work on the Monday. We've always done it on the Sunday before so we didn't clash with weddings at the venue. And the stipulation of having it on a Saturday means that we just can't run around this field here because it ruins the photos of the people having their sort of courtyard weddings in this area. So we're heading straight out of Shuttleworth into this beautiful woodland here. If you've seen any of the photos we've published from previous years with lots of lovely pink flowers, this is all in this woodland here. Um, you get a nice look at it at the end as well. We're going through this uh, woodland that you don't, wouldn't have normally gone through last year, but it's really cool finish that we're doing instead of just hitting straight to the finish. So yeah, this time we're going straight out. And if you know the area, then you go through a little village called Old Warden. Um, I've highlighted just here there's a hazard just to say obviously you're going to be quite you know bunched up at the start as you come into Old Ward and you're initially just running along this pavement it's very quiet road but um, there'll just be points where you need to cross over in order to get where you need to go so this is one of them so you're on a pavement on the right hand side there will be a marshal here just making sure everyone crosses before you get to this corner so you've got good visibility just in case any traffic's coming the other way not particularly dangerous but just follow the marshal's instructions at that point um, and don't just cross you know obviously make sure you look left and right um, if you see people crossing in front of you that's not just an indication just start crossing you may have a car coming you need to just check I always think in race situation you can come sometimes just forget those basic things it's very very normal so just be a little bit alert, um, especially when there's lots of you crossing together, that it takes a little bit longer to get everyone across. But there we go. So we go out on quite a nice um, section to start with. I mean, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but you can see that it's across um, the lovely countryside here. Got a kind of an L-shaped section out and back. This is sort of very slightly downhill on the out and very slightly uphill on the back. And there's some really nice fields that you go through. I don't think it ever does it real justice, to be honest, when you're in Google Maps. It's always far more beautiful when you're down there. It kind of looks like you're just skirting around fields here. But trust me, it's a lot nicer than it looks. And there's some really, really nice single track paths and different different bits that you go through that is just really fun trail running. Um as you kind of get to checkpoint one, we've got one sort of quite fast road crossing, which is aptly named Dead Man's Cross. Uh, Marshall should be here at all times, but this is one just to make sure you stop and just check because cars come quite fast into that village, but you are literally just going across the road. And the first checkpoint is 14.3 um, kilometers in. So this is in the village of Haynes. Um, it's at the village hall, so there are toilets here and everything that you might need. You're coming in through this back entrance and the checkpoint's located in the car park. And then as you head out, you turn right out of the village hall along the road, uh, sort of left then right, and then you're back out on the trails. Got a nice descent down here. And then another couple of things just to point out in terms of hazards. There's a short section as you leave the footpath just here 
that you have to run along the road before you then rejoin the footpath. There's quite a nice verge on, on, on the road, so you're not actually really running directly on the road. But as I've just sort of pointed out here, the verge starts on this hand, this side, and then there's a point where it's very, very natural that you should cross over because the verge sort of swaps sides, and it also means you're not running sort of on this blind corner here. So just what you'll see when you get onto a section like this, there'll be a signpost that is directing you across the road at a specific point. So please do just cross the road at that point, and then that always means you're on the safest part of the trail. There's going to be a marshal in this location too, so they will kind of direct you with what you're doing as well. So you, you really don't need to sort of worry about these, but as I say, it's just nice for some people. They like to sort of know these things up front. So yeah, that hazard, I don't really think it's an issue, but marshal's there, sign's there, just, just be aware of that. Now you're sort of going around, sort of you get a little downhill, you're going into Clophill here. Clophill's cool little place. There's a very famous old church here that's got all sorts of stories about it. You've got a little uphill and then downhill, skirting on some different trails until you get to, it's called Apley Corner, It'll be a marshal here. Um, and then you've got a very long, kind of very runnable section here. For I mean, all of this is very runnable and it's quite quick. Um, but just the trail is like the technicality is really, really low. It's quite hard ground. It's got a nice little downhill here. So I think you'll you'll be sort of feeling quite good at this point. Um, bear in mind that when you get into Shefford, before you hit that checkpoint, you have what will be the hilliest section of the race. It's, uh, I mean, you know, compared to a lot of our other races, this isn't really hilly at all. But for those of you that like your flat running and, you know, having already run 25 kilometers or so this bit is an uphill so this kind of u shape that you do that's an uphill and then you get the downhill again so that will be what i would say what will feel like the hilliest part of the route and again this isn't a dangerous section but in previous years what we found is you come out of this trail and go across this roundabout it's all on pavement it's all fine um we get you to cross so you GPS file actually isn't particularly helpful just here, but you basically go across the pavement here, across that road, and then we'll cross you onto this right-hand side. Or in fact, we may even sign it this way. But either way, this bit's nice and simple, and you're running along this pavement. The problem we've had previously is there is no pavement on the other side, and what people tend to see is they tend to see people going across the road where there'll be a marshal here to go up that footpath, and sort of people want to get ahead of the game a little bit and think, oh, there's no cars coming, so I'm going to cross a little bit earlier. And it sort of creates this concertina effect of people crossing all along this road, all at different points. And the problem with that is as soon as you're on the other side, you haven't got any pavement and therefore you're actually running against the traffic, which although it's only a 40 road, because it's quite busy coming in out of Shefford, it's not what you want to be doing. So please, please, if you're watching this, when you get into Shefford, just stay on the pavement all the way until you get to that marshal, and that marshal will get you across safely. Don't cross before that. That would be my top tip, please. So there we go. You're over halfway at this point, and then you go into Shefford. The checkpoint in Shefford is based in the car park, uh, the public car park here. Um... So you'll get pushed into that checkpoint. There's no toilets directly at this checkpoint, but if you're desperate at this point, there is a public toilet just here. If you're going to use that toilet, just one thing to bear in mind is runners love to follow each other, and this isn't the official race route. So if you are going to use this toilet and there's runners behind you, make sure you tell them not to follow you all the way into the toilet at that point. They need to be going down following the canal, the river just here. So Shefford is 28.9 km into the route, checkpoint 2, as you leave you're turning left out of the car park and then yeah you're following the river Ival here. This is a lovely section, really nice uh, nice and flat but also some really good scenery and just, just fun running again. Um, and you, you take that all the way up until you get to this road here. And then this is the other road that although... Um, it does have a sort of a, a verge that you can run along. There is no pavement on this section. So again, marshal at the start, marshal at the end, and they will tell you where to cross so you're always on the verge rather than in the traffic. And that, that road can get a little bit busy and you, you sort of, you, you know, you've been running for a while there and I, 
can often, I don't know, feel a little bit stressful because there's a lot going on. But as soon as you turn left here, you're onto this lovely section all the way into Broome. And again, quite fast running because it's quite flat and it's quite non-technical. But as you turn left here, you get some nice sections. You go past what used to be sort of a quarry area. Um, and then you get into Broome. So the, what's nice, I think, about this is you've got only nine kilometers between checkpoint two and checkpoint three. So you can break that down really, really nicely. And then once you hit Broome, you've got refueling, um, toilets there again if you need them. And then you can just reset and you've got 12k of great trail running to get to the finish. So from Broome, you go past what is one of the best pubs in the world, uh, the Cock. Uh, the, I think it's, is it called the Cock? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a very cool pub. They don't have a proper bar there. I'm just man stands in the middle pouring beer. It's really, really cool. That could be a, a great location for a post-race drink if you're looking for one. Uh, so you turn left at the Cock. Um, and now you're kind of going through these different sort of little reservoirs and some nice kind of sandy trails here and you're sort of weaving around them past Jordan's Mill where they actually make the cereal and the cereal bars that's their factory there and then you're going kind of along the river rival again following the main path um, and this is where you arrive back into kind of Shuttleworth so what you'll notice here is you're coming into Shuttleworth. So as you cross this road, that will all be marshalled. Um, quite busy, but you're just going straight across. Um, you're basically back in Shuttleworth at this point, but you've still got a bit, bit of running to do. So don't get ahead of yourselves at this point. You might even, if you've got a good set of eyes on you at this point, you might just sort of see beyond this airstrip just here, the start finish but you turn left off this main track. You can't actually go down there. There is a barricade stopping you from running directly onto the airfield. So you turn left here and then you're kind of winding your way back. So through these trails and then you're coming kind of back to the point where you hit this point here at about a kilometer into the race and you turned right. And now you're coming back from the other way, turning right again. And then you're sort of flowing down through, you're going past this, it's called the St. Anne's, St. Anne's, Princess Anne's summer house through some trails and then you turn the corner here and you'll be able to see the start finish and you've just got to get through these uh, through these trees, turn right and then bang, 50k in the bag and that that is the Green Sand Country 50k. As I say, it sort of doesn't look too, uh, too interesting on Google Maps but trust me, it's a great run really really fun and it's a good test of your sort of ultra distance running because it is a little bit more runnable you have got less walking breaks for you know than compared to say the Chiltern Ridge or the North Chilterns that we do which is very much a sort of a run hike situation but whatever your plan have a great day there's obviously you know you can walk as much as you like you've got nine hours to finish it um, and we will very much look after you so um, for those running um, in the 2023 edition, um, we will see you on the 10th of June. Um, yeah, have a great trip down there.